on it. You just stop. He said, don't bugger out them boys. Wait a more here. <laughs> I think so. Up by pushed my window in a jiff. I saw a tabby cat outside. He was chasing another one round our yard. If that your game, I cried. Why, it won't last very, very long. And I won't last very, very long. I went downstairs and I got my gun. I popped a bullet out of his hot cross bun. Tom said, Tom said, that's a bullseye. His bell went ding, ding, dong. You've done quite enough, Tom, a little bit of fluff, but it won't last very, very long. <laughs> Clifford's craft is as traditional as his talk. I don't stop in that. <laughs> That's old no end, Bo. <laughs> it's a long while since that the wood was an acting, Bo. <laughs> Today, Clifford is having some help from his friend Reg Sillett. They both live in the depths of Suffolk. Have you got the rabbits around your old farm? Unlike the West Country speakers, they don't stress their R's. They say bargain for bargain. Past, not past. And they pronounce new for new in the way that's typical of East Anglian English. They both have a long memory for the old words from the old days. We still will write and work on an old farm here now and uh, I had to go down to an old field one day and he said to me, he said, you're going to go right to further side. I said, what do you mean further? He said, he meant farther side, you see. In the further side, he said. So he went across that old field and I got across there and I see an old bloke there. Yeah, he said, where are you going? I said, I'll come to the further side. He said, what do you mean further side? I said, I don't know. I said, more don't know farm, I don't think. <laughs> I come away one day, I said, my granny, I said, I'll direct my Brisbane. Brisbane, she say, yeah. I say, oh, you slap your shut sleeve, you see. They can't call that your sleeve. They call it your Brisbane. All this is Brisbane. Did you tell that? Mm, in here, no, yeah, they call that Brisbane. Yeah. And uh, what else did they used to say? When there's a cart in the high and that, you know, if they ain't gotten up to top the stack up, they didn't say want a big load. They say want another little bargain. Mm -hmm. They call that a bargain. They didn't call it a small load, no little bargain. Little, little bargain, yeah. yeah. That's when you got it there, that was too big. The main thing to remember was your frail, boy. Frail, yeah. You've got to keep your frail weak, because yeah. if you lost that, you ain't got no grub bend for the rest of the day. What was the frail then? Well, your dinner bag, you <laughs> frail. <laughs> dinner bag. <laughs> you got to keep a hold of that. Yeah. yeah. Did you have to wear loges? No, my father did, but yeah. I wouldn't be messed up with that. Yeah, no strap around here. No, couldn't mess up. All the up there, they put oh, holly yeah. in, and they put no strap around there called a loger. Loger, yeah. yeah. That's right. Them days are gone, boy. They're all gone, gone, yeah. yeah. Here in Eastern England, we've got a completely different modern dialect from the one that we have over in the southwest of the country. There's no R after the vowels as we had turn and heard. And it's that freedom from the R after the vowels that is still to be heard in the New England states of America because it's from here, from Cambridgeshire, Norfolk and Suffolk, that the Puritans went over to the eastern United States and took with them a completely different language, which is still identifiably different today. Baker and Travers are here in East Anglia to find the roots of Puritan English. Well, this is something. Oh, yes, yeah, so all the timber and those carved figures up there are very nice ones. Church and parish Another. records also tell them about the kind of people who emigrated to the New World. Today, they're on the trail of the Howland family, whose story provides an important clue to the making of American English. <laughs> Henry Howland worshipped in this church and is buried here. Of course, over here is uh, old Henry himself, <laughs> the plaque there. One of his sons, John, was a pilgrim who crossed to America on the Mayflower. The pilgrims on board the Mayflower intended to make a landfall on the bountiful coast of Virginia. Wind, tide, and poor navigation swept them north that November to the wintry, inhospitable shores of the part of America that became New England. New Englanders, like Len Travers, feel that it was East Anglia which played the decisive part in shaping their accent. Many feel that the New England dialect is, uh, is based primarily upon the English East Anglian dialect. Uh, 
There are reasons to believe this. Uh, both the East Anglians and New Englanders in general have a tendency to drop their post-vocalic R's, as in Havid, or Yad, or Ka. Um, that's a rather common aspect. And yes, I heard a lot of that in East Anglia, be sure. Some people pick up their dialects rather quickly. Some of them have a natural advantage. For instance, um, if a New Englander is going to play an East Anglian, they have a natural advantage in it, and they find the dialect usually easier to pick up. Uh, whereas if they must portray someone from uh, Zumerzet, uh, they find that a bit more difficult to do, because they must now pronounce their R's, which they never have done before. A living example of a modern New England accent, inherited from his mother, is Jim Baker's. I mean, you hear a certain uh, East Anglian tone to some of the people that speak here today, I think. My mother has been taped by people doing a linguistic atlas of uh, New England. So apparently my accent, if as much as it's like hers, is one of the old Plymouth accents. People say it sounds like Maine, but then Maine was connected with Plymouth back in those days. But it, it's... Uh, it is an old Plymouth accent of sorts. And left, left, left. How language changes is often mysterious. Although the main traceable elements were brought here by East Anglian settlers, theirs was not the only accent. It's the march of history that gives us the contemporary speech of New England. And hold! Over 300 years later, the Howland family still prospers in the same town. Today, some of John Howland's descendants run the Mayflower Fish Restaurant, a stone's throw from a replica of the Mayflower itself. The Americans who eat and work here have a modern New England accent that has evolved significantly from the English of the Pilgrims. It's a lot of fun working here because we meet people from all over the country and um, people are you know pretty good sports they're anxious to try new things that they've never had before so they come in and they ask a lot of questions about well, what's a quahog or what's the difference between a clam and an oyster and, and a lot of them order lobster this is for him would you like to try them out they come from down east and I like fish <laughs> well there's a lot of different types of people who come in most of our business is local people. We have a lot of the older Plymouthians, a lot of the descendants of the Pilgrims, the Brewsters and the Howlands, who own this place are. There's quite a few throughout the town. In many ways, more conservative than British English, there are words still spoken here whose meanings have survived in the United States long after they were lost at home. I guess for I think. Gotten for got mad for angry, and fall for autumn, would all have been familiar to Shakespeare and his contemporaries. Sometimes you get a lot of customers who come in here and they'll be really mad at the fish prices or how high they are. So they get really mad at that and don't really care for it too much. I guess I will live in, live in Plymouth the rest of my life. I'd like to, and I guess my kids will also. Today, the New England accent 